in this part, we are going to be finishing the chair model. Uh, so the only thing left is uh, some wooden rungs down here at the base and some little screws. And then after that, the model will be finished and then we can move on to texturing in the next parts. Uh, so the wooden rungs start with an object that most resembles it. And that happens to be a cube for most things. So just add in a cube, position it somewhere where the rungs start and uh, yeah, it's gonna have a tapering effect. So I wanna just like use a mirror modifier because uh, I don't wanna have to do the same thing twice. So mirror and by default, it will work it off of the origin point. We could select another object here, but you know, who cares? <laughs> we can just position things as easily as we can anywhere else. Uh, so that's good. And I'll turn on clipping, which means that I can take this face here and then smash it into the other face. And now they're joined, which is what I want. I normally, I, I think clipping should always be on and you should, because I, I don't know, the, the points should be touched and merged and that's the way to do it. So anyway, um, now I do want to remove this face here because you never want to have a face in the middle of an object. Um, it's just bad news. It's always going to cause artifacts or shading problems. So uh, make sure you delete the face. And uh, yeah, we're going to be using the subsurf modifier as well because this object, much like this wooden base here, is uh, it's got a hard flat face, but then very beveled smoothed edge. And it's also got some smooth curves going across here. So you could use just like a bevel operation, but like I said, it's got the, uh, the smoothness uh, going this way. So might as well just, just use the subsurf modifier. So uh, subsurf, which by the way, if you want the hotkey to add a subsurf, control one will add a subsurf modifier with a viewport of one. Um, you can go like control two, three, four, five, and you can see it increases the viewport there. But basically control one, that's just add a subsurf modifier. It's that common, it's got a little shortcut. Uh, which if you want the shortcuts, by the way, make sure you get my PDF, link is in the description. If you already follow the donut tutorial, you should probably already have that, but uh, anyways. Okay, so we've got this uh, pill looking thing. Um, and I'm just going to pull this out. Um, yeah, you guys should know how to do this already, right? You can kind of guess what's uh, what's to come. Now, what is confusing about this uh, this blueprint is that uh, it's not. It looks like you've got like aberrations of the rung. You've got a rung, and then you've got like three, four lines down here. So basically, um, I was confused at first, and then I remembered that Fredericia in its blueprint download also gives you a uh, three quarter view. And it confirmed what I suspected, which is that these extra lines here are in fact where the bevel starts. So uh, yeah, you've got basically for each rung, you've got one, two, three, four lines, but there are two rungs, which is why I think that the front rung is slightly higher than the one in the background, which is why you're getting like extra bits below it. So anyways, point is we're gonna take this uh, this top bit and this this is where the top rung is going to start. The top of the rung is going to start. And then on the second line, this is where the bottom of that rung is gonna start, okay? And obviously we'll just duplicate this rung and then just move it down slightly for the one in the back. Um, and that's it. Cool, so um, I've been reading YouTube comments, which generally is not a good idea. You ask any like YouTuber and they'll be like, don't read your comments. It throws you off and it just people complaining. But in our case, uh, people, I, I like to see what questions you have and what you're having problems with. And also to learn how I might be doing things improperly or things could be done better. So something that um, some people brought uh, raised to my attention is like, I mentioned that the lazy man way to uh, to like make a sharp edge like we did for this base here was just to delete the face, um, which is easy. <laughs> it's very easy to do. Uh, but a lot of people said like, uh, why not keep the face and just use like a, a crease, an edge crease. Um, and you know, there's pros and cons to each side, but uh, it's a good opportunity to talk about edge creases uh, regardless because I didn't talk about creases. So if you select an edge like this and you hit shift E, you are, you can see in the top left-hand corner, you are creating a crease and the creases range from zero to one. By default, every edge has a crease of zero. Anytime you add something over zero, that edge, that edge there becomes purple. I'm not sure if it's clear there. Doesn't even look that clear. It's got like a black line. I don't know. Anyways, it's got it's got a crease to it. So um, what does a crease do? Well, it essentially, 
it, it's almost like it's it's adding an edge, like it's pretending that there's an edge loop there, but it's also kind of not. You don't get control. It kind of just like pulls out the middle. So if you like this, this line here is like the middle of the subsurf modifier. And it just kind of like gives it more weight and all the way up to a crease of one, it pretends like that is like a hard edge essentially. So the thing is, is it removes any point of having subsurf to give a like a bevel on an edge. So I generally don't like using creases. Um, I instead like to use edge loops. So for example, we need an edge loop, right? To give this edge here it's bevel so instead of using a crease there i want to use Control r to create a loop cut just like what we did for the leg before um and you know what i'm going to go off of the, the blueprint make the bevel start where the bevel starts and uh, adjust it later if needs be uh and then another loop cut for the bottom down there and they should be on both sides now which is good um, i'll also scale this in just slightly We'll fix it later, but uh, I mean, get it exact later. But anyways, point is, is I want an edge loop for something like this, because I want there to be a nice bevel. But for this edge, for this, this part here, if we wanted to make this not tapered, but like a hard, sharp edge, we could do what I mentioned before, which is the lazy man's method, um, which is that. <laughs> um, the problem with that is, uh, yeah, it can create shading problems. You could like, if the face was, like if that hole was open, maybe, the renderer might throw some light in there and bounce it around and do weird stuff. I don't know how true that is. I haven't done any tests. I don't think anyone's done any tests on that. It doesn't really matter all that much. One advantage that I would agree is that um, in the real world, surfaces don't intersect, right? There's a very, very subtle gap between where this wood stops and the leg starts. And while the gap might not be visible to the eye, uh, the shadow within the gap would be, and that can actually add realism. And actually you can see it very clearly right in here. So the wood doesn't intersect it, there is a very slight gap. So more so for a realism kind of thing, um, it would actually help to probably keep this edge and maybe even keep this edge if you were so inclined. Um, and so, so how do we uh, stop this tapering? You do it with um, a crease. So let's do that. So I just wanna select the edge going around it, not these middle, middle bits here. So uh, I'll select this holding down Alt, click that, then hold down Alt and click that and that. So I've got that edge and now I'm gonna hit Shift E and I'm gonna pull this all the way out until in the top left hand corner you can see it says one or you can just type in one um, and that'll do the exact same thing. So it's a maximum crease, which is essentially treating it like there is uh, a face there. I mean, sorry, that there is no face there, essentially. Um, now, it looks okay now, but we're gonna be using Shade Smooth. And when we do that, you can see we get these horrible shading artifacts. But we had the same problem up here. And if you remember how we fixed it, we went to the normal settings and turned on auto smooth, which now treats at any angle over 30 as if it is a hard cut that's like separated mesh. I like to raise this to 60 because I only want it for like, ang like basically 90 degree angles anyway. And sometimes you get like one little face which is over 30 and it adds a hard edge and it's annoying. So I just set it to 60. But anyways, now we've done that, um, it looks pretty good. Now, it is at a very slight angle so uh, you can see in here, it's it's rotated at a very slight angle that matches uh, the base of the chair. So just rotating it a little bit like that. And uh, now we can get the scale of this object. Uh, yeah, we can, we can scale this, right? Now here's a, another little thing that I learned from the comments because uh, it, it reminded me of something that's in the keyboard shortcut PDF, <laughs> um, which is that, uh, before, when I was talking about using, uh, when you're normally doing a scaling or moving operation, it's going along the global orientation, right? Um, and there's advantages to that. But then if you want something local, such as in this case, this is rotated at a very slight angle. And if I was to go like this, uh, the edges would actually be kind of skewed, right? It wouldn't be a perfect thing. Uh, so I wanna instead uh, scale it along the local Y axis. But instead of going up there and changing it, I forgot that if you, uh, you know, when you uh, hit like S for example to scale, and then you choose your axis with Y, if you push Y again, tap it twice, it now changes it to local. So if you don't wanna to have to go up there and change it to global, you just double tap the axis, tap it again, and it'll go from global to local, which is 
Uh, very convenient. I forgot about that. So uh, thank you for those uh, like 100 or so other people that were pointing that out in the comments. I was like, yeah, that's a good point. You don't have to like do it. Yeah, you just tap it twice. So very convenient. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, we can move this out and I want it to be almost touching like this. Now, here's another opportunity to learn something new. Um, I want this to rotate so that it is flush with that chair, right? Now, if I was to rotate, just rotate like this, what you would actually find is that this, the height of this will now be slightly different. The height of this, if you go, went all the way along, you could see that it would actually be changing slightly. So this is, um, this is what happens, right? Like if you are rotating a face, if you rotate it too far like that, the height of this is changing with that rotation, um, which isn't desirable often. And in a case like this, it's, it's, it's not desirable. So the, uh, what you should be doing instead is shearing, like edge shearing, I don't know. That always comes to mind whenever I do a shear. Um, now there's a hotkey for it, but I can never remember what it is. So instead I just type uh, in, the, in the search, which is F3, I just type in shear. And you can see it's Shift, Control, Alt, S is the hotkey. But anyways, then I just click that. And then you can see that now it's rotating that face. And if, by the way, it's not rotating, uh, you can hit X or Y to choose a specific axis to shear on. Um, but anyways, now that it's done that, you can see that I can get... Uh, I can, it's now rotating the face as far as you want, but it's keeping the height of this exactly where it needs to be. So this is like perfect for making things like cabinets, which I've done, I talked about in a, a previous tutorial, but anyways, point is, is I want to rotate that, shear it until it's uh, almost, yeah, it's basically, oh, look at that. That's pretty perfect. Ha, <laughs> perfect. Great, so now I wanna move this up, okay? Um, now, if I was to move this up, my perfect little sheared face here, um, it would be like, like it would be a little bit too far this way or a little bit far there. So just like what we did before, we talked about loop slide, um, but you can't go higher than what it was, but if you hold down Alt, then you can. And actually someone in the comments said, instead of holding down Alt, uh, you can just push C once, and it just turns that on uh, or off, clamp, Clamping goes on or off with that. So uh, you don't have to hold down Alt, you can just hit C once. Um, and now I've got that in place. I uh, just have to double tap for the one underneath it um, because it doesn't uh, doesn't need to have clamping on or off. So this one does. So double tap, you know, double tap G, C, and then pull it down to about there. Mahaha. <laughs> and then do the same thing, double G. And there we go. So there's, a, I mean, that's really noisy to, uh, visually noisy to see the blueprint underneath it. So I'll just check. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so you can see that the, uh, like with subsurf off, right? This is like a hard, very like pinpoint edge there, but every subsurf will average it out just a little bit and it'll smooth it and smooth it. Uh, now, if you did want more control over this, you could add in some loop cuts here, but uh, I think it actually, it it's good to keep this here because it's letting the subsurf, you know, average out the, the, uh, the angle of it and it should do it pretty well. Like it should match the lines pretty well. Um, unfortunately, because of the way subsurf works, uh, this part here, you can see that the top of this uh, this rung here is actually higher than it should be. So if we just pretend, like if we just drag it down beyond that, like if we added a loop cut in closer, you can see that it would get that angle exactly. I uh, sorry, it would get the measurement exactly, but I don't wanna have to add in loop cuts cause then I'd have to like make sure that it's cleared up and ah, I don't know, I just don't like it. So instead I'm just gonna let the subsurf do it, but I'm just gonna drag these in uh, closer than they actually are. Um, but, uh, but that should be good, that should be fine. And let's just look at that. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, nice flat face uh, where, the, where it should be flat. Let's just check this. Ooh, very flat and then rounded on the top, uh, which is good, yay for us. So now, uh, now that the front one is lined up, we just need to duplicate it and create the back one, uh, like so, and rotate it. And now in the front view, drag it down so that it is like that. Now, I don't know if that's actually accurate because like in the, you know, over here, you've got like the, the difference between this part here and that uh, curve there is pretty small. And this one here, it's bigger. So you would think that they would be the opposite way around, but then how would the blueprint 
like showed this like you couldn't have those like I, I don't know it just didn't match but then i realized like yeah this is actually at an angle here the the chair so it kind of does make sense that it could be like this anyways i'm just rambling <laughs> i'll just scale this out ever so slightly so that it matches and i think we're good I think that's going to do it. So I just want to apply the scale on that and apply the scale on this because you need to do that because <laughs> otherwise things can go weary. Um, but that's good. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Everything is uh, the way it should be. Cool. Oh, yeah, it does actually. Look, the, uh, the, di the distance between that little curve there is small and the distance between here is big. But because of the angle, it actually makes this one higher than that one. So uh, there we go. That's result. Okay, that was like in my head. I'm like, is this accurately matching it? All right, cool. So now the last thing we are going to be doing is adding in the screws. Okay, so if you were to make this model for uh, like a game or... I don't know, like a production model, I don't know, something like that. It would be best to make these screws part of the texture because you wouldn't want something extruding from the chair because in real life, these are actually indented ever so slightly. But it's a lot of work to like bake something into the texture, especially with Blender because Blender's baking is not that great. Um, so instead, we are going to be placing some screws which are just slightly higher than the level of this wood here, uh, which is not accurate to the reference, but I think you will forgive me for doing that because the alternative is like an hour of extra work or something, like export it to Substance Painter or something like that. I, I don't know, it just seemed like too much work. Um, so we're gonna do it. The fast way. So we are gonna make a screw. Now these screws are actually little, um, if you're getting close, you can see they're like little Allen screws. It's like that six sided Allen screw thing. Um, so we're just gonna make one really basic. So this is a circle. Uh, where is the circle? I can't see, oh, cause it's really small. Oh yeah, that's right. So I've, uh, I've done these, uh, yeah, you can right click something and make it its default value. There you go, a little tip, um, but yeah, so by default, it should be 32 uh, with, with that size. And then I'm just gonna scale it in and uh, I wanna get it roughly the size of a screw, um, which are actually pretty big. But anyway, we can change the scale later. The hard thing will be to actually create that five-sided Allen, sorry, six-sided little Allen screw thing. Now you could make it a texture and then put the texture on here. Who cares? It's something that small. This is where it really helps to not be a knock for like too much detail and eh, all that stuff. So I'm gonna delete this face, so only face. And then inside here, I'm going to add another circle and I'm gonna make that circle six vertices, which it's done uh, because I guess it's defaulted to that one again. But let me just clear those, which you can do with backspace. Instead of right clicking and then hitting unset, you can just backspace over a value and that'll reset it. Um, so six vertices, scale it in like so. Okay, now how big is the little screw? Yeah, it's sort of like that, okay. Now, what I wanna do is I want to join this face with these, and that cannot be done simply with like F because it would just make a solid face and it would be terrible. Instead, what I need to do is um, I need to make a face out of uh, like that. Like, so this side of it, I'm gonna make a solid face by hitting F, and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing right here. Nope. Missed one, there we go. And my ear just popped. That's weird, I didn't realize I was not hearing well <laughs> until right now. It's like, oh, surround sound. That's what the world actually sounds like. Uh, fun, all right, hit F and then one more here. Um, the reason we're modeling this instead of texturing it is that it's just so much easier because then I can just select this face and then give that a new material when we do the material parts and that'll be, that'll be making it look like a screw. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, now I do wanna give a little bit of thickness to this screw here, just so that if it, there's not like a shadow underneath it, uh, like it's not completely flush with the surface. But anyway, something like that. And if you really wanted to, you could also like extrude this face ever so slightly down. But to be honest, I don't think it matters. That's, we're just gonna make that a new material color and yeah, who cares? Okay, now positioning this, this is the fiddly bit, right? You have to go off of the reference photos and go like, where where does it actually fit? Because it's not in the blueprint, it doesn't show you where the screws go. So um, yeah, where do the screws go? Just eyeball it. So 
This first one is, uh, yeah, it's like there. So it's kind of like at the corner of it. Now, obviously it does need to align with this leg. That would be, that would make sense. So I want to position it down here. Now, here's a tip, here's a technique, whatever you want to call it, um, to rotate something, like to make it so that this matches this face here. The old way that I used to do is like, get it down close and then like rotate here and then rotate there and very fiddly. However, you can do something better, which is just to uh, change your snapping mode to be face. And then if you check this little box that says align rotation to target, what this means is that uh, when you hit G and if you hold down control, it'll now enable snapping and it will now rotate the object to match the rotation of the face that it's on. So you can see that line there, I'm just pointing at my monitor as if you can see my hand, that line there that's coming off it, as I move across it, you can see that line is uh, changing. So it's showing you the normal, which, uh, which is the rotation of our object. So I'll position it, so from the corner, about there, let's just check it, make sure that that's, yeah, it's close enough, move it up again. And let's just hit G, move it there. Yeah, something like that. Okay, and now that I've done that, I'm gonna duplicate that and move it down here. Now, I don't know if the rotation has changed right here, so let's just get in there. Oh yeah, oh, did I get the face wrong? Oh no, it's like a completely different height, of course, because it's a, uh, yeah, anyway. So I might as well just hit G and then Control, and I'll snap it there. So you can see that like, it's not exact, like because the faces are like, there's many faces or who knows which face it grabbed. Uh, so I just bring it up just slightly until it's uh, like, it gets the rotation like 90% of the way there. Um, and then you sometimes just have to do a few little tweaks. So I essentially just want it like as little <laughs> extrusion as possible because we're doing this lazy modeled method rather than the textured method. So I don't want there to be like hard screws that stick up in this $900 chair. That's what this chair costs, by the way, which is pretty crazy, but that's what designer chairs cost. Um, but anyways, so I don't want to do that to this side, like get it all fiddly. I'm just going to save time and use mirror and then mirror the object of the seat. And now it should perfectly align with that side. And then the exact same thing here, mirror the seat and it should just ever so slightly stick up. Cool, cool. And can you guess what we're gonna do next? Hmm, the backing. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, uh, this is the, the life of a 3D art. This is the kind of thing where, uh, like when you're making something that you you are so bored or you're so, it almost feels like manual labor, you know? Like I used to actually be a laborer, believe it or not, before I did uh, YouTube. I was uh, working on construction sites, cleaning portaloos, whatever <laughs> they could pay me by the hour to do, that was my job. Uh, but anyways, this feels like manual labor, like placing a screw, even though, you know, you're, you're not really working your muscles. Um, <laughs> it feels really close to like the most tedious, like, can I hand it to somebody and pay them X per hour to do it for me? Like, this is why, you know, add-ons that save you time um, or that might do like this, for example, in one click are really helpful because normally you might not actually place screws by hand because it's too fiddly and who cares and you might just skip it. But if there was an add-on that did it for you in one click, you would do it. So you end up with a better result because you didn't skip a step you know what I mean? So that's the value of time saving in production. So thankfully we don't have any other visible screws. That is the pros of a designer chair that costs $800, $900, whatever it is. Uh, I don't know how they did it. I don't know how these slats fit in here with no screws. Must be like some like rigid connection that snaps it or something. I don't know, pretty, it's wizardry, but there's no screws there. They would on like a maybe Ikea chair or something but this is the value of a designer chair. Anyways, we are done. We have finished modeling our magnificent chair. Look at us go, ha ha ha. So in the next parts, we are going to be unwrapping this, which would be like applying all the modifiers, unwrapping it, and uh, then assigning a texture to it and doing some shading and then finally rendering this thing. But congrats on finishing the modeling stage. Give yourselves a round of applause or whatever else. Have a beer. I don't know, however you celebrate at home. Uh, I don't care. No. <laughs> 
do something fun. But well done. I mean, making it this far, learning a new skill, it's uh, it can be dry, but uh, well done on, on making it. So go ahead, join me in the next parts, and we will finish this bad boy.